Happy Fire Alarm Friday and welcome to today's demonstration of the Wheelock AES EL1. So as you can see, today's video is going to be organized in a bit of a different fashion. We have the A camera, the B camera, and the C camera all out shooting at once and together for the purposes of this video here. So hopefully it should be something fun for you to enjoy. Uh, today, like I said, we're going to go over a demonstration of the Wheelock AES EL1, which is the device that you see front and center that looks exactly like the EH EL1 that I showcased in an earlier video. Additionally, with the AES, I've got the Wheelock RSS 24 MCW that we unboxed in the last video. And then up above it in the old moderator alarm position, we have a Wheelock LED exceeder with an amber lens over it that we'll be using to demonstrate another one of the functions of the AES. Down here for the initiating devices, we have a system sensor duct detector key test station that we'll be using. Uh, we've seen this as a moderator alarm activation point, but now we're going to be using it for a bit of a different purpose. And then for the fire alarm pull station, I've chosen the Notifier LNG-1R. And this one came brand new in box from eBay, so it's very new to me and very new in the collector's community here as far as this particular station. So we'll be using that today. Now for the purposes of recording narration, I do have my phone right here with me, so that way I can kind of carry it around um, since all three cameras are positioned differently and their microphones are set for the appropriate levels such that the AES will not interfere with that. I'll just be sitting here and holding my phone to record the audio for this video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into it. So the Wheelock AES EL1 is a tritone tri-input alarm. That means that it has the ability to do three tones, but it has three separate controlling inputs for those tones. And what I mean by that is that the horn has the ability to do a horn tone, a siren tone, and a warble tone, and each one of those selections has a specific set of contact points on the back of the alarm. There are terminals for each of those tones, so there's a potential of six wires that can be put into the back of the alarm to control each of the different outputs, meaning that there are three pairs, positive and negative, for each of the tones. And then, of course, a basic higher low volume selector for which we are going to select low because this alarm is very loud. That's definitely one of the loudest in my collection here. For the purposes of the demonstration, I have both the horn and siren tones wired at the moment. For the horn tone, it'll be obvious that we have it set for a fire alarm activation, which the RSS will activate for and will also be performing Wheelock Sync Audible Silence. The horn is set to temporal coded by the panel, and so when we activate the LNG-1R, that'll activate the AES in horn mode. Then we'll go ahead and transition over to, say, a supervisory activation with the key switch, and that will activate the LED exceeder, and we'll set off the siren tone of the AES, demonstrating that the same alarm can be wired for two different tones at once. Uh, it depends on which input you activate. As far as prioritization, say if supervisor is already activated and then a full alarm comes in, I'm not sure how the AES prioritizes that, nor do I really want to shove two inputs in on it at once. Um, so we're not going to be testing that and demonstrating that. I'm still trying to see if I can find some of the product literature for that. If I do find it, I will be sure to let you know in the description below. Okay, so I'm just kind of running and gunning it here with the XA um, after I'm done filming the full video. Henry from Henbasket Fire Alarms came in clutch and answered one of the questions here that we posed during the video, um, asking... What happens when the AES receives multiple inputs at once, uh, especially if one's already going off? And he has a copy of the manual and was willing to provide some pictures of it. So according to the documentation for his AES, in the case of simultaneous inputs, the three audible outputs are self-prioritized as follows. First priority is the siren tone, second priority is the warble tone, and the third priority is the horn. So that means that if we're already on horn, and then either warble or siren is activated, that'll prioritize over the horn tone and those will take over. It seems a little counterintuitive to me that the horn tone isn't the first priority given that it would often be used to signify fire condition, but I suppose in the early 1990s when this device was introduced and often manufactured, um, that wasn't necessarily a concern quite yet as there hadn't been a standardization over to the temporal three mode and often we would 
start to see continuous horn tones being used instead of siren tones and high-low and whoop and warble and all of these oddball ones of the MT and the mass era. So I guess this kind of makes sense um, if you look at it retrospectively in the time it was produced, but um, by today's standards this would be very off-kilter as the priorities seem kind of weird. We would definitely want the fire alarm horn to go off if a an alarm comes in while we're in a supervisory condition. Um, but it doesn't seem like that was the consideration in this case. But anyway, that kind of answers that question for us here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and demonstrate the horn tone of this device. It sounds much like the Wheelock EH-EL1 or EHS-EL1, EHS-DL1. It has the EH horn tone that we're all used to that sounds like a very early True Alert or some of the True Alert ESs that we hear today. So we'll go ahead and activate that by pulling the LNG-1R. I'll remove the key and then let's go ahead and pull it. So as we can hear, again, it does have the reminiscent tone of the EH series horns, so it definitely sounds a lot like it, and if you were to just hear this in the wild, there's really no distinguishing characteristics that would say, hey, this is an AES, and you wouldn't really be able to tell that it's an AES unless it was to demonstrate a different tone. Uh, these tones do remind me of the Faraday 5337-W. Uh, that's also a tritone alarm, however, it can only be fixed to one tone at a time, using a little set of jumpers on the back of the device. This one allows you to use all three tones and you can use them with whichever triggers you'd like. So however you want to set up that condition, you can do that. So let's go ahead and reset the pulse station here. I'll just grab my notifier key. It's very simple to reset here if I can insert the key correctly. The key goes upwards and then it just locks right into place. As you can see, the RSS is still flashing. It is set to 110 candela, and the LED exceeder will be doing the same. So let's go ahead and reset the pulse station, or the system rather. And I'll put the keys back in the LNG1R. And then we'll go ahead and activate the duct detector key station. Now this is going to be a very loud tone. It's very ear piercing, very shrill. We'll go ahead and activate the siren tone, simulating a supervisory condition on the system. This is a supervisory AR, so as soon as I turn the station back to the on position, I, it'll resume normal on the panel and the alarms will shut off. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. So as you can hear, it's a very loud tone, definitely uh, not something that you want to be around without hearing protection. I am currently wearing a pair of noise cancelling headphones with the noise cancelling turned on, so that's what's helping me out, and even then it's still relatively loud coming through those. So it's definitely a loud alarm. So I think for the final demonstration we'll just kind of go through these uh, one more time each so that we, you guys can get plenty of fire alarm action and we can listen to this one more time. So we'll go ahead and do key activation for the LNG-1R and simulate a fire condition. All right, we'll go ahead and reset the panel. And then let's go ahead and activate the key station one more time.
And with that, that concludes our demonstration of the Wheelock AES EL1. I'm not demonstrating the warble tone today just because it's pretty much the siren tone on crack. Um, it's definitely not really something that's worth showcasing right now. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.